Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, on the road indeed. This is actually year number five. Pretty soon here, before the end of the summer, we'll be uh, we'll be starting to work on year number six. Uh, but this is show number 159 of the Irish Family History and Genealogy podcast, reaching over 40,000 people each month. And uh, among today's topics at the Irish Roots Cafe, number one, the family name of the day is Morrow. Number two, the book of the week is King James Irish Army List. Number three, searching for Parks, Garvey, Moriarty, and O'Hanlon. Uh, number four, the Nutterjack Toad in Ireland. Now, what's that all about? Number five, the web page of the month is Google Ireland. And number six, where was Michael Jackson's house in Ireland? And number seven, the one-minute podcast is James II and the Prince of Orange. <laughs> Well, let's see. That brings us to the uh, notes for the week. What's happening right here at the cafe? Uh, we just got a few uh, this week. Number one, Bill Sweeney has just made a very sub- successful trip to Ireland and he returns with research story and tips, and we plan to interview him here shortly. He might even be in the next week or two. Number two, uh, mark August the 6th for the start of that Dublin, Ohio Irish Festival and Academy. Remember, we're going to have a five-hour genealogy and Irish family history workshop with DNA and history in the, in the uh, 1600s, history in the 18th, the famine, the whole gamut there of Irish history will add what we can. And number three, don't forget this Saturday is Brown's Irish Street Fair, and that's the oldest continuously run uh, Irish business in North America. And we we fly up to Brown's every year at this time and enjoy that festival. It's really, uh, hey, when you're the biggest in North America and it's an Irish thing, what the heck, it's worth going to. Number four, after 30 years, I'm finally putting up uh, some of our family history on our web pages I've got. Uh, that would be O'Laughlin and Donahue and Kilmartin and Sullivan and Kelleher. And uh, the hits just keep on coming. But I've just started O'Laughlin. I got a little up there on Donahue. And uh, I've got a link on my uh, blog there. It goes to you. You can click the uh, quick and easy link on the web page if you just go there. But I've got a link directly to it on the blog if you check it out. And I welcome any hints or additions or help from... Uh, those of you out there who might have those lines to contend with as well. Uh, now it's time for, oh, it's the One Minute Podcast. I wonder what it is today. Well, today the One Minute Podcast is from the Hedgerow History uh, Podcast. Uh, the Hedgerow History of Ireland, and Peter here is going to tell us a little bit about uh, James II, the Civil War, and the Prince of Orange. The, the War of the Two Kings. Um, James II, of course, by this time, was the King of England. But James had, oh, he had something that the English weren't too happy with. It was called Catholicism. James, who had been the son of Charles I of England, remember old Charles lost his head under Cromwell. So this is the period after Cromwell. Cromwell's son became Lord Protector, but it was a great disappointment. And they thought, well, we need to have the restoration of the monarchy. So they did bring Charles II back. Charles was Protestant, but then he died. And the natural heir, the legitimate heir, was James II, and he was Catholic. Well, they weren't too thrilled with that. And uh, uh, 
uh, James uh, started to uh, redo the issuing of uh, Catholicism in England and, of course, in Ireland. And the Irish were looking very forward to this uh, and thought that would be a wonderful thing. But the Parliament, remember the old battle between Cromwell and the throne, the Parliament and the throne said, who was in charge? The Parliament. So as the Parliament, when James started to uh, make things more Catholic, many members of the Parliament said they didn't want that. They would prefer that they remained a Protestant nation, considering other things that were happening in Europe. Uh, there were Catholic nations and Protestant nations, and which side did anybody want to be on? And so they, the English then decided to invite uh, a fellow who was the Sovereign Prince of Orange. Now, that's, uh, that was Peter on the Hedgerow History Podcast explaining a little bit about King James II and uh, what was going on there in the 17th century. Be sure to listen to, I think that was on uh, last week or the week before's podcast for the Hedgerow History, and you can get that on our webpage at irishroots.com. Click on the History of Podcast, uh, History of Ireland podcast on the left-hand column of that page for that. Hey, we're moving up now to the Book of the Month. Well, now here we've got the book of the month. It's King James Irish Army List, and it's hardbound, a thousand pages, and it's a genealogy and family history of all the men found in the ranks that could be found. And uh, uh, I tell you, a fellow put that together who was pretty smart and had a lot of resources, some of them that don't exist today. And uh, many people overlook this work. They have a completely wrong idea. They think that an Irish family, meaning a Catholic family or an old Irish family, wouldn't be found in the work because no Irish family would have been in the king's army. Uh, and that's based on the belief that the patriotic Irish would never be found that way. But if you, if you look back to the 17th century, King James, in fact, was a Catholic, so... You can bet there was a lot of Catholics, maybe mostly Catholics, in King James' ar army. And uh, the Irish joined right on up with uh, King James. And one reason was the guy on the other side was so much worse for everybody in their condition. So uh, listen to the rest of those that Hedgerow History podcast. You'll learn a lot about that century and how it affected everybody in a great transfer of land ownership. I think 90% maybe uh, it affected every single family in Ireland. And uh, at the end of it all, King James Irish Army lost, and they became known as the wild geese who flew to the continent in ships, and they were exiled forever. Thirty to 40,000 of them sailed off to the armies of France and uh, uh, the rest of Europe. And uh, it was a sad story, but they said one day these wild geese of Ireland are going to return and free us and free our nation. And uh, that was the romantic notion of the day. Uh, now, this book was written by Dalton, or D'Alton, who was born 1792 in West Meath, and he, he set out to record the history of each of the men in that Irish army list of uh, King James. And, uh, of course, it wasn't just Catholic. There were Scots, Irish, and Protestants who opposed the new order in England as well, and uh, uh, so they're in there too. But this is really a, a resource that could be interesting. Not every family name is, is covered in depth, that's for sure. Some people he couldn't find, uh, but some are, and uh, it's well worth your look at it, you know what I mean? He included some 70 regiments, and he listed them by name. And sometimes even having the name and what regiment they were in uh, could give you some clues or some background to your Irish history. Uh, so I tell you what, it's a good source to find the uh, Catholic and Protestant who fought in King James' army in the, uh, 18th in the 17th century. So take a look at it. It's uh, well worth your time. And remember, they all left for Europe, though, so uh, they could be scattered everywhere. <laughs> Hey, remember, we've got uh, the podcast you're listening to now. We've got it as a regular podcast and as an enhanced podcast. So, so you can see it with uh, uh, little still photos and links put in those photos when you're listening to it. If you have iTunes or QuickTime, uh, just a reminder. But now it's time for that favorite, uh, favorite little spot, and that's 
the time for today's magnificent, magnificent seven. It's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here we go. Number one, wel- welcome Cindy Flood of Chicago, Illinois, new member, and your County Meath and West Meath book has shipped. Number two, Diana Eiler of Lakeland, Florida, your Irish family's great and small has shipped. Number three, Dorothy Kidd of Beeville, Texas, welcome as a new member. Uh, William Morrow came to the U.S. with John Parks, his father-in-law, and Jane Parks, his wife, around 1750, 1760. That's who they're looking for. Number four, welcome new member Dennis Garvey. Your book of Irish family is shipped, and of course, Dennis is looking for Garvey and Garvin and McGarvey, Moriarty, O'Hanlon, Hanvey. Uh, Number five, Gould Genealogy of South Australia. Your order has shipped, and if you're looking for some of our books in Australia, Gould Genealogy has quite a few of them. Number six, Dr. Martin Atkinson of Alberta, Canada. Your County Armagh book has shipped and the Book of Irish Families. And number seven, Teresa Kreider of Mobile, Alabama. Your County Donegal Genealogy book and Families of County Donegal have shipped. Uh, So that brings us up to the Magnificent Seven, the end of the whole deal. And I wanted to remind you that... uh, Thank each and every one of you for your help. We wouldn't be here if you weren't members or if you didn't buy some of the books I put out over the last 30 years. So uh, I appreciate it. And you're responsible really for everything we put out here at the cafe. Well, let's take a look at the family name of the day. It's going to be Morrow, or sometimes spelled Murrow, which would be M-U-R-R-O-U-G-H for the latter and M-O-R-R-O-W for the former. And today's uh, family history is in honor of the member I just mentioned a few minutes ago, Dorothy Kidd of Beeville, Texas. Now, you're going to find that name a lot of times has a Mac or a Mick in front of it, so it's Mick Morrow or Mac Morrow. And uh, there's some other funny spellings that are associated with it, too, I'll mention in a minute. And it's variant spelling groups number 1559. 2516 and 1438 and that's from the guide to the various spellings of irish family names a link to that on the blog i've also got that book on uh, on amazon.com too i got a lot of my books on there and uh let's take a look at that name of morrow and if you look at the simple spelling of m-o-w-r-r-o-w it might stem from the older family spelling of mac morrow spelled in the old uh Irish, I've got that on the blog, and that they were centered anciently in County Leitrim, and the name is also found centered early in Ross Common, and later on in the province of Ulster in Ireland, which is way north, and that's where some of the name uh, could also be of Scottish extraction. Now, if you look at the MacMurrow family that can be found as Morrow in some cases when you drop the Mac, they were ancient kings of Leinster, and they held sway in Wexford and Carlow right down to the time of Elizabeth, and uh, they battled the English for centuries. And uh, the spelling of MacMurrow now is very scarce, but you'll also find a link to the families of Kavanaugh, Kinsella, Davis, and Murphy, and that might be to the fact that uh, Dermot MacMurrow was the Irishman who invited the Normans into Ireland in the 12th century that led to the eventual destruction of the old Irish way of life. Uh, so they could have just taken other names uh, because they had to. Their neighbors might not have been too happy. Um, now, if we take a look for Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms, yes, we do find a coat of arms for Mac Murrow, And uh, it's a simple shield. It's got a lion, a rampant ar- argent. And that means that lion's old standing up, and I think he's sideways getting ready to pounce. And there was even a red background on the shield I looked at in the Irish Book of Arms. So it's there. Uh, that was granted to an individual, and who knows, the clan might be able to claim that. You'll have to look into detail on that uh, uh, subject. And uh, guess what? Coming up later in this episode, in what county is Michael Jackson's house located in Ireland? That's a very interesting subject, and uh, I bet not many people thought about that, but I just read it about it last week, so I thought it included at the end of today's podcast. Now, if we take a look at the free Master Online Index at www.irishroots.com, we find listings for the Morrow name 46 times. Here's a few examples. Uh, number one, the fam- Families of County Donegal, Ireland, one of the county books. Number two, the Birth Index of Ireland. Uh, Number three, it's actually in King James Irish Army list, so we just talked about that book. And uh, 
Well, here we'll start in just a second, a short break, and we'll come back with the last four sources. Well, continuing with the Moros here, we've got uh, William Morrow in the Special Census of Ireland. That was Pinner's survey, and we've got that for sure. I published that a few years back. And O. Morrow is found in the families of County Cork, Ireland. And, uh, you know, O. Morrow is, Morrow is also found in the six, census of 1659. And even Morrow's son is found in Irish names and surnames by the Reverend Patrick Wolfe. Uh, so that was very interesting. And remember, you can stop and put uh, look for your own family name on our online free search index there. Anytime you want to, just go to irishroots.com and uh, type in your root name. If you leave off the O or Mac, it'll pull up everything with or without it. And that's really the way to search, uh, search Irish family names. And remember, uh, coming up, we've got a, a little comment about, about why the Natterjack is valuable in Ireland. The Natterjack sounds sort of like the Nutter Butter. Put a little Nutter Butter on a Natterjack. I don't know. That's a funny sounding name. We're going to find out what that's all about in a while, and then you can uh, tell all your friends uh, that you know all about the Natterjack in Ireland. Yeah, that'll teach them a thing or two, won't it now? Uh, <laughs> we're getting ready for our next uh, uh, little section here, and that's Websites of the Month. Well, it's around the world in Irish ways. Our first selection for this month is uh, Google Ireland. That's at uh, www.google.ie, rather. And it's uh, the Google search engine just for the country of Ireland. And you can narrow down some of your searches. But uh, you can also search for names and surnames and events and things that relate just to Ireland. It makes research a whole lot easier uh, when you when you filter out some of the things from all the other countries in the world. You might save a million or two uh, extra choices that you don't need to, to wade through, if you know what I mean. And number two, we've got uh, Irish records that were added to FamilySearch.org. And uh, they're, they've been listed on, at the link we've got on our blog. And some of those new records that they've got posted date back to the year 1745. And that's always a help. Number three, we've got a link to the Irish famine migration to New Brunswick, 1845 to 1852. And uh, that's on a blog at Blogspot. I got a link on uh, uh, our blog. You can go right there by clicking it. And number four, uh, a new review of Your Family History magazine. Now, the editor and chief of that new magazine is the lead genealogist for the UK's Who Do You Think You Are television series, according to, according to this reviewer. So uh, he should be pretty good. They should be able to come up with a good magazine there. Uh, uh, lots of things happen in the publication in, in industry, that's for sure. And remember, we also have our Irish video shorts on uh, our webpage. You can take a look at those and... Uh, Gosh, maybe we'll have some more up there by the end of the year. It's uh, it's hard telling what we get to. We've just restarted the Irish in America podcast, so uh, be sure to subscribe to that if you haven't already. Well, here we've got uh, curious news and notes from Ireland and are all around the world today. Uh, number one, I noticed that the 2010 Special Olympics were re recently launched at uh, Thoman Park Stadium in Limerick. Up to 15,000 were in attendance, and the Flame of Ho Hope torch was passed throughout the stadium, and thanks uh, was given to J.P. McManus for helping sponsor the event to the tune of 250,000 euro. Boy, that's a, that's a deal. I've got a link to that on our blog. Number two, Waterford teenager Kevin Phelan qualified for the U.S. Open at uh, Pebble Beach this year. He's currently on scholarship to the University of North Florida. And boy, what a thrill that much must be. Good luck to you. Number three, speaking of Limerick, earlier there for the Special Olympics, we find that the Hunt Museum in Limerick and the Foynes the Foynes Flying Boat Museum are now going to have a dedicated bus service uh, between those two attractions, and they get about 30,000 visitors a year, according to reports. And they're also thinking about putting a steam engine uh, uh, little service in between those two areas. And I remember taking a steam engine uh, 
down there in County Kerry to that uh, to that windmill, uh, windmill there out of maybe it was out of Tralee to the windmill and back. But that was a nice little re- relaxing trip, and it wasn't too commercialized. It was just a a nice slow and easy trip taking you back into time on an old form of uh, transportation. So that that would be interesting. Uh, link on the blog number four. Michael Jackson's Irish Retreat House is for rent. And that would be Bishop's Town House in County Westmeath. Who would have thought Michael Jackson would have had something in County Westmeath? Number five, thanks to the Natterjack Toad, farmers around Castle Gregory and Kerry are going to be paid cash for every pond they dig for the toads, plus cash for looking after those little boogers. And 46 farmers have signed up and 90 ponds have been created so far. Uh... That's really interesting. I wonder if I've got some land over there I could just dig a pond and make some money. That sounds pretty good to me. Number six, the National Archives podcast may be of interest to researchers and historians uh, in the UK, remembering that they they house a thousand years of history and uh, uh, in the UK. So I've got a link to that on the blog. And they do have a lot of information, just like the, uh, the U.S. National Archives has a lot of information and help. Uh, Just narrow in on genealogy if that's what you're looking for. Uh, That takes care of all the formal notifications. But uh, like I said, we did release the Irish in America uh, podcast under a new format uh, for this season. I'm doing uh, interviews at Brown's Irish Fest, the the social street fair. And uh, it's sort of give you an idea of what kind of people uh, were around that neighborhood before it changed and before modern times came about. I sure wish I could go back to 18, uh, 1810 or 1850 and hear some interviews. So I made some today and tried to talk about the old days in the neighborhood there before uh, things had all changed. So that should be helpful for everyone. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation on local history of the Irish in America and on 2000 years of Irish history as well as on the counties and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, We've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, Get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way... A big thank you to all of our members, and away. <laughs>